Right, well, I've just bought this Sony PlayStation 2. The seller said there was no display and I think the eject button doesn't work, but it does switch on. Someone's been in here before because that is missing. The display port is damaged, which is probably why we've got no video or audio out. So I'm going to open that up and I'm going to see if I can fix it without breaking it any further. So let's get started. Right, well, so we'll test it to make sure it comes on first. Switch on at the wall and do we get any power? Yes, I know. Yes. So do we get power? The fan spin. The eject button's not working. The audio video port's damaged. But we'll plug it in and, and wiggle it and see if we'll get anything. Uh, make sure that's switched on. See if we can bring that up. I think I've got to turn my microscope off to get that to turn on. There it is. Switch on. No signal. Nope. Right, let's get this open, see what's inside. Ah, that sounds awful. If memory serves is right, there's a ribbon cable here somewhere at the front. Yes, there is. I can't remember how to do this. <clears throat> it doesn't look very clean inside. I can't see what's holding the drive down. There's a cable out. That hasn't been pushed in properly, so I'm wondering if that's why the wondering if that's why the drive isn't opening. What's that? Is that a bug? I wonder if I can get that back in and test it again. Right, that's in. Put this power supply back in. Now I've got it open here, so I'm going to try not to touch it because I don't want to get electrocuted. So we'll power on. And I've still got no eject. Nope. Right, interesting. We'll have to take it further. I have a feeling I'm doing this the wrong way. Should I be doing it from underneath? Right, that's a power supply board out. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble. I've taken one of these apart before. I don't remember it being this bad. I'm going to have to admit defeat and have a look online. There's a lot of little screws underneath there. Right, so I've taken all these little screws out of here and this just lifts off. And that's how you separate it. This has still got the original PlayStation battery in with the logo on. So I'm going to swap that out. I'm going to put a new one in there and then I'm going to put it back together and I'm going to see if it fixes the disc tray. See if we can get the disc tray to eject. What am I looking for? So I've got a new battery, which I've just put down somewhere. There it is. I think that sits on top of there. Right, now that ribbon's attached, that's attached, that's attached. There's one I've taken out, is this one, which I'm pretty sure is that one. Then you must have to sit this on here somehow. This one. And put that on. Except I haven't put this on. Ah. Alright, not going to worry about that fan just yet. I just want to see if I can get it to eject the disc tray with a new battery in it. No. I wonder if there's a problem with this button. Can it be the button, surely? Where's my multimeter? Right, beep mode. So the button is working. There's nothing wrong with the button. Is the problem a fuse gone? Is the CD drive not getting any power? Here's the cable. It could be a faulty cable, so I could test for continuity between these pins and the pads 
on this ribbon cable. I think we'll do that just to rule that out. That's the end of the cable. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there's nothing wrong with the cable. So we'll have to look elsewhere. Well, actually, that cable carries the signal from the button to the board. I don't know which of these cables takes the signal from the board to the CD drive. So this motor must do the in and out, in and out jobby. And that connects to here. So I'm wondering if there's any fuses around this area we can look at. Nothing stands out. At the moment, I think this chip is the one responsible for the drive. And these are the fuses. Ah, look, we've got some corrosion around here. We've got some corrosion around this cap. Don't know what that is, but that doesn't look factory. Corroded wires, yeah. It's not looking good for this one. But I think I'm just going to have to clean the board up and we'll put it back together and we'll see if we've got any signs of life after that. I had expected the AV port to be the reason. So we'll clean that out. We'll just give the board give the board a good clean. That's the area I'm worried about. Right, I think I'll put that back together and see if it's made any difference. I might have to focus on the audio video port. I don't actually know if the console's booting up. I'm wondering which pin is video composite out. That one. So I am getting a signal from the through the port. Am I getting a ground signal? Yes. So I should be getting, if I was getting video out, I should be getting it through this cable. So if I'm still not getting video out, there's a problem with the board rather than the port. Right, switch on, switch on. Got my power light on, still no. Now that's a power light on. Is it not supposed to go a different colour when it comes on properly? I'm on red. That's reset, isn't it? Does it not go green? I thought it was supposed to go green. Hmm. Did it go green earlier? Well, I've just checked it did go green earlier. So that's not a good sign. So I've actually made it... made it worse. Try not to touch this power supply because it'll have charge in it. Presumably I should have voltage on these pins. Can I just take the power supply out and see if I get voltage? Right, don't do this. This isn't a tutorial. Don't play with power supplies. Don't watch me and then do it. And then blame me if you blow yourself up. Uh, let's turn it over very carefully. Right, four pins. One's gonna be ground. I suspect ground would be on the outside. Or well, that one, nothing, nothing. 12 volts and 12 volts. I've only got one 12 volt rail coming from this power supply. Seems a bit strange. Saying there's just four pins. Maybe if I plug that back in. You never know. Yeah, now I'm getting nothing. No fan spin. No power. Nothing. Well done, Philip. made it worse. I'm going to check some fuses around the board and I'll come back to you. Right, this one. PS11 is has gone. So that's the same type of chip. It's either that one or the other one on the other side of the board or on the top side of the board are responsible for the CD. And that's gone. So I'm going to replace that one. And we'll come back and test it again. I'm hoping I've got some. They are 20s. 
VR S25. Uh oh, I'm going to be able to look, aren't I? Doesn't look like I've got any 50s. So PS11 is blown. No continuity. I've got continuity on that cap, so that cap's going to ground. Shorted, which is shorten. Looks like it's shorten. This chip. So either the chip shorten or the cup shorten. So I'm going to take this cup off before I order anything. There we go. So there's still a short. So could it be this chip? Do I take that chip off? What's underneath? Could it be something on this side? Could it be this one? Yes. It could be. I have a feeling it's the chip. And I'm going to take this one off. And I think it's going to be the chip. Yep, that's okay. No, that's not okay. That's uh, still shorten. I think I'm going to have to take this chip off. There's a connector in the way here. It'll be game over for this, I think. If this chip is shorten, I haven't got another chip to go on. Nice and easy. Right, so has that removed the short? And it has. So I think this chip is kaput. That will go back to the beat mode. These are ground, I believe. You know what? I think that chip might be okay. I think that chip, that chip seems to be all right. What's going on? That chip seems to be okay. There must be something else in the circuit. So that's getting more and more interesting. I should have made a note of which way it came off. So I think that chip's okay. That fuse is definitely blown. The capacitor seems okay. But there's another short somewhere else. But if there's another short somewhere else, why is it not showing up now? Because I've taken the chip off. The chip went to here, but it's gone. Which was this pin. I think it was this pin here. And that's not shortened to ground. Or it was the other side, which is this pin. And that's not shortened. So I'm stuck at the moment now. I will have to get a schematic and trace where these pins go. I think I'll put that, those two capacitors back on before I lose them. In fact, I'll put the chip back on as well. That looked okay. Presumably my shorts come back. Yeah. So I've put this chip back on. I'm going to short on these two. And these two run up on the other side of the board to here. And I've got a cap going to ground, and a cap going to ground here. I've, there's nothing in inside here to, to check, but these pins are definitely shorted. Now I have taken the chip off and put it back on. But I couldn't find any shorts on the pins on the chip. So I'm wondering if these caps have gone. These are plus and minus. I'll show you. These are plus and minus for pins 4 and 5 on the loading motor. There are solar balls underneath both of them. You can see them on the bottom. You can see them poking out underneath here too. I don't know why. There's one. There's two. So has that removed the short? No, it hasn't. So the short isn't that. So I can put those two capacitors back on. I think I'm going to have to take that chip off again. With that off, 
These were shorted. And they're not shorted, so it must be the chip. Definitely pins those two. This one and this one. Yeah, so that chip must be faulty. So I've got a short circuit on this chip. I've taken the chip off and the short circuit's gone. Just for the hell of it, I thought I'll put it, the motherboard back together. So everything's set up apart from the, the, the CD drive. I've got the ribbon cables have been pulled out and pushed back in that many times. They're starting to fail. And even with this chip removed, look at this, I did get a picture. Now I've got no heat sinks or anything on, so I'm not going to leave it on for long. But I've got a red light. And if I switch on... There, it boots up. I'm totally, totally amazed that this actually boots up. The controllers are working. I can't believe it boots up with a chip missing, no CD. Just, yeah, it's amazing. So I'm going to switch it straight back off. Okay, switch on. Got a red light here and fan spin. And there it's working. So we've got display. I've set the timer on the clock, put a new battery in. So the clock should be right. Let's have a look. 10.51, that's right, so the clock's working. I've got a memory card in here, so the memory card's working fine. Whatever these games are. So the system seems to be working okay. Obviously I can't test the, the optical drive because I've removed the shorted the shorted driver chip. I'm still not convinced the shorted driver chip was causing the, the no display. If you know that to be accurate, let us know in the comments. Or whether or not I've just cleaned something up on the board and it's brought the machine back to life. I'm not sure. I'd like to get a replacement ribbon cable Oh, I need a new chip and I need a new fuse next to the chip which had which was marked up as 50. I need a new one of them because that's blown. But all in all, I'm I'm quite pleased with that. It's not a proper it's not a true fixing video. But I have got the system working and I look forward to coming up with some with the opportunity to replacing this chip and getting it working fully. I'm testing out this CD drive. I think the system's been dropped. Some of the screw posts inside are broken. So it could have been dropped. I'm not sure. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you next week in the next video.